what you receive from God. Amen. This is not about right now corporate. This is about each one of us needing a fresh touch of the presence of God. So I encourage you, even right now, give a personal response. Give a personal response. God, I love you. Jesus, you're everything I have need of. Jesus, I need your presence in my life. Let the power of your Spirit work in me. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. God bless y'all. It's an honor to be here. Um, it's been a great weekend um, at Living Hope and all the daughter works. Um, everyone is so welcoming and nice. Um, and I just wanted to praise the Lord with this song. Um, y'all, y'all can take a seat. Y'all can be seated. Um, but if you wanna sing along, you are free to. I'm pretty sure everyone knows this song. Um, so let let us worship the Lord. Get this on.
more to the one who actually died for our sins, who actually came on his own and sacrificed himself for our soul. If you think that clap is enough, I'm, that praise is enough, you can stop if you want to, but I'm going to keep praising the Lord in this night. For sure. Amen. I want you to open your Bible in Acts 7, pick 3. I want you to be patient with me tonight because this is my first time uh, preaching in English. And all I said it was, God, if you want a word to come out of my mouth, just put it in my mouth. All right. If you, you want something, uh, if something is going to come out of my mouth, you don't want me to say, just don't say it. Right? Because it's not in my hand. I'm not preaching tonight. I'm just here standing up and he's just speaking through me. And that's what is going to happen. And I believe that I'm not even worried anymore. I know he's going to do what he's supposed to do. And I'm happy to be here with you at 753. Amen. It says, You have received the law that was given through the angels. But have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sadarian heard this, they were furious and snatched their teeth at him. Right. But as Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, looked. He said, "I see the heaven. I see. I see heaven open, and the Son of Man is standing at the right hand of God." At, at this they covered their ears and yelling at the stop of their voice, they would rush a hand and dredge, dredge him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witness laid their cups at the feet of a young man named Saul. And I want you to um, pay, pay attention to this very close because that's what I'm going to try to preach about. And I want you to sit down for a moment. And I want to preach this message. This message the God has given me is a uh, thank you, and Stephen. All right, come on. All of, I think all here we know this this verse in the Bible and the, and the death of Stephen. But there is something more um more deep into this. There is something pretty pretty deep into this. And I want you to pay close attention for for, for the word of God right now. And then I, I want to explain to you. What is so deep? This, this, this attains uh, Stephen. In Acts 108, I want you to uh, put it in the screen. That's what I said. I want you to be patient with me because I'm using two Bibles in English and in Spanish. <laughs> and it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be witness in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. This promise it was given to uh, for God. It was actually not happening at the moment. We, we need to remember when in uh, Acts 238 when the Pentecost happened, the church start winning a lot of souls. They start acting uh, in an aggressive way. They start preaching to every soul that they found in the street, and they were going really aggressive. But it was only in Jerusalem and Israel and the surrounding areas. 
And we have to understand that the gospel it was not spread out like it was supposed to, like it was commanded in Acts 1 8. So it happens that um, the disciples actually start preaching the word of God. Peter and John preached and they went to jail. And But before they went to jail, they preached a message and they, they reached 5,000 people with this message. So I think that when they went to jail, they were happy because they already reached a goal that many of us want to reach right now, right? If we, right now I go to jail, but I win 5,000 people with this message, I'm going to go happy. So it doesn't matter if they dress me like an orange, I'm going to be fine. Because I know I did a lot already. But the, these two guys right here, they were preaching, and actually when they came out of um, the movement of the Holy Ghost just came, the first miracle that they, they did, it was actually in the street. And many of us, we know these, um, these verses in the Bible, when uh, he said, I don't have uh, gold and silver, but what I have, I give you. And we have to understand that the miracles are supposed to happen in the street when the Holy Ghost touches us here in church as well. And we have to go out there aggressive in an aggressive way. And knowing that God has poured on us the Holy Ghost to actually do miracles, miracles in the street. Yes. How many of you believe that? Yes. I do believe we are capable of making miracles happen in the street. Yes. I think we can go right now in the street of the sea and see a prostitute and, and pray for them. And they can come to church and become something great. Yes. Because I believe that the power of God is greater than what we think it is. There's something that called my attention when they uh, stopped in and said, what are you preaching this? Who gave you the authority to preach under this name? But Peter, he said he was filled with the Holy Ghost and answered and, and asked 4.12. He said, there is no name given to man and earth right. and then we can be safe. Right. So he said, that name, that, the only name that can save actually give me the authority to, to say his words. So you have give, you have you have been blessed by God with a name. They only not give you the salvation, but they give you the authority to do a stuff that you don't even believe that you can do. Signs, wonders, miracles, all these things comes with the name of Jesus in your life. It was like confirming that that only name is the one that saved and is the one that has the authority upon everyone. We can see it in Acts 5.12, if we can look 5.12, Acts 5.12. And I'm going to start preaching a little bit. I just have to go through this so you understand what my point is. And then I'm going to start, you know, preaching. And it's going to get fun. You're going to start clapping and jumping. And all that that we actually Because that's what we like, right? Yeah. <laughs> 5.12. Thanks God for the iPads and iPhones and all these things. That, yeah. <laughs> the, um, it says the apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's. You can read that. I cannot read it. No one else there joined them, and even through they were highly regarded by the people. Never, there, never, their less, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their numbers. We have to understand that when the, the uh, apostles start preaching the word of God, they were acting in an aggressive way. So many people was just coming to church, listening the word of God, but it happened. Something happened. Yes. There was a commitment in Acts one or eight, like I say, that it was not only the word of God only; it cannot be preached only in Israel and Jerusalem. It needs to be spread in the whole earth and, and the, to the end of the earth. Yes. Yes. And that was not happening at that moment. So something unbelievable happened. They came with a great idea because I think it's a great idea. Then they start saying that the apostles were not taking care of the widow. And I, I was reading this and I was like, this is so weird. Because it's like a crazy idea. All right, well, we're going to stop the gospel just because with this crazy idea that, we, that they're not taking care of the widows. So I was like, this has to be God's plan. Something has to come along with this. And they have to choose seven people that we know. And they choose Stephen. And I want you to read real quick because that's when my messages start. And Acts 6.1. 
And it, and they say, how are we gonna how are we gonna just start taking care of these women if we're gonna stop preaching the word of God? How can we just do that? Right. So we need seven people. We need seven people, and they go to Acts six, six one. Amen. Amen. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebrew Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribu distribu distribution of food. So the, the twelve guard of, of the disciples together and said, I will not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on the table. It sounds a little rude. You can say yes, it sounds a little rude. How just they don't want to serve or just what do they think they do they are? Because they're preachers, they just don't want to serve. And then we have to understand that for, for preachers to actually develop, to actually preach a good word of God, they need time. They need they need to be separated from all these things. So as a church, we need to understand that the pastor needs to be taken care of. So he can have the time to actually come out with a great message for you. He can just not be taking care of a lot of stuff and your problems and stuff because there's many people right here that can do it for the pastor and he needs the time Hello. to actually develop message for you that's going to help Hello. you. Amen. And I want you to say amen for that because you know, I want you to be free to actually study the Bible and all these things. But I, something that caught my attention when they choose the sevens and they name is Stephen. They said he was a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. And if you can read the rest, none of them have that um have that accomplished, right? right? There were three things that, that, that they need for this ministry. It was a, and my and my version said it was a good testimony, full of the Holy Ghost, and um and actually full of the Holy Ghost, a good testimony, and they have to have wisdom. And Stephen have all those three, but he has an extra one. It was the faith. Yes, all right. And that is amazing because that, that made me think, well, Amen. it was something else. Yes. Amen. He was the one he was actually showing up right there, you know, and, and between all these guys. But something really, really bad happened to Stephen. He was actually doing signs and wonders and all this thing. He was just preaching. But it came to the point that they didn't support the wisdom and the spirit when he was talking. And they just wanted to kill him. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the bad and good thing was that he got a good testimony. So there was no way to kill him. But only paying someone to actually talk and stuff that was not true about him. Yeah. 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 And that's what happens sometimes in church. If your people cannot destroy your ministry, they're going to start talking about you. All right. All right. All right. That's what happens sometimes, Pastor. Right. They just start talking because you're doing a lot for God. Because you're doing a stuff that other people is not doing. Because you wouldn't solve that nobody wants. And God is giving you the people that everyone, everyone wants. Because you are winning the homeless. You are winning the people that, that nobody wants. And God is giving you the people that everyone wants. You are winning the poor. And God is giving you the rich people. And you have to believe that because and this church is not a church of poor people only. This church is not a church of only people that just come with necessity. There's people that's going to come here. They're going to invest in the kingdom of God. They're going to give money to this church. And you don't want to believe it when you see two million, three million of dollar pastor just laying in the bank account. And you can win many souls as you want. And all they can do is just talk. All they can do is just talk. But something that amazed me is that Stephen, it says in the Bible that when they put him in front of everyone, his face, it was like an angel. And I was I studied a little bit, and, and it was not just like an angel. It was, it was peaceful. That's what it meant. In his face, he was so peaceful. He was not even worried because he, he didn't know that it was not true what, was, what the people was talking about. So sometimes as a Christian, it's really hard to have a peaceful faith when they talk and stuff. Yeah. Right. So as Stephen showed me, I'm a, a great Christian in all the aspects. Because as a Christian, when people are talking about you, you don't have an angel face. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's really hard to have a peaceful faith when people are just talking stuff about you and you know it's not true. 
Oh, you, you, you took his water. No, I didn't take it. Yes, you did. I saw you. No, you didn't see me. <laughs> but Stephen didn't say, you took that water. See, he was all right. Whatever if you say so. That was him. They were saying that he was preaching another gospel, another gas, another stuff. He didn't care because he knew his, who, who his God was. Right. And he knew he was right. And he didn't care. And something that got them mad it was that he didn't, he didn't uh, shut his mouth about the truly message that he was preaching. Right. We have to understand that we have the right message and we cannot just shut our mouth. Right. When we have to preach, we have to preach the word of God. It doesn't matter. Right. And I tell you this, I'm stretching myself right now preaching in English, but I don't care I'm doing the right thing. Woo! Because like God will do what he's supposed to do. Stephen, he was accused for something that he didn't do. Yeah. And that's pretty sad to die like that, like to die like that, to get killed like that. Yeah. He didn't deserve it. And that moment his ministry was actually growing. Yeah. He was doing wonders, right. miracles. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can say, why God, why are you going to kill Stephen at that time? He was the only one in that moment that he was actually preaching like he's supposed to be preached. Why? Why do you do this, God, to him? Why do you let him die? But there was a purpose. It was something bigger than this. They say that they covered their ears and they start hitting him and stoning him. And everything he did was just still praise him and say, thank you, Lord, for all this. And you know what? As a Christian, when we are receiving the struggles, when the devil is throwing rocks at you, it's really hard to praise him. But that shows the word that the God that we want and the God that we trust is bigger than our, than our problems. And that's what is actually changing the world out there. Because they cannot take more with the pain that we can take. They cannot take the struggle that we, that we can take. I say people, I see people with cancer actually praising God. And they still praising God, even though they're gonna die, but they know where they're gonna go, and that's the important thing. When you know you're going to heaven, you don't, you don't care if you are sick. You just feel praise him. You just feel worship him because you know the God that you want is going to take you to the place that everyone wants to go. Amen. This is something that amazed me. I imagine Stephen in the ground just saying he's needed receiving all this, this punishment and, and didn't deserve it. He didn't know what was going on and, and what was God's plan for him at that moment. The Bible says that the people take their clothes off and put it in, in, in the, in the, um, the fiddles of Saul. And I was studying, and many people think it was a Stephen clothes that they put up in front of him. But it's not true. It was the people that actually take their, take their clothes so they can throw the rocks with more precision and not miss him. So they were, they were really determined to kill him that, that day. They really wanted to kill him. They were really mad at Stephen. And that's what happened with, when you preach the right message. Right, that's what happened when you do the right thing. That's what happened when you have a great testimony. That's what happened with your faith. Yeah, as being here than other people. People try to throw rocks at you. But all you have to do is keep on praising him. Keep on giving him glory. And he will do what he is supposed to do. It was a really supernatural moment that day. I believe so. He was right there and see Stephen's face with so much peace in his, in his face getting killed. And he was wondering, what is this man getting killed and he is so happy? What is this man getting punished and he is so peaceful? What is going on? What is all this? Who is the God that he's serving? Who is this guy? And he was getting hit with the rocks, and I believe bloody was just dripping down his face. I believe he was probably crying because I don't think if I hit you with a rock, you're going to be smiling. I don't think if I throw you a rock, even if he's this small, Pastor, it hit me in my eye, I'm going to go cry, that's for sure. I'm going to be whining like a baby. The Bible doesn't say how many people it was there, but I think it was a lot of people right there. Yeah. Probably 40. That's a lot of people throwing rocks at you. A lot of rocks. And then you can put it like, how many? You can put five in your hands. One right here. 
And you can just keep on throwing one and then two. Yeah. And he was just in his knee receiving yeah. the rocks. Just. But I think he was feeling like someone was just touching him. Like, yeah. like really nice. He was having this really nice feeling. You know what? <laughs> Every rock that they throw ahead, it was, yeah. he was getting closer to see the glory of God. Yeah. Every rock that he was receiving his face, he was getting even closer to see the master, to see the creator. And this is something that called my attention that when we have problems, when we have the struggle, we are getting closer to the glory of God. We are getting closer to see His glory in our life. I think that when we have a problem, we have a victory. And we cannot see His hand moving in our life. It's not so that you have problems sometimes so you can see His glory. So, so say thank you, God, for the rocks. Thank you, thank you for the rocks. It's not always going to be candy. It's not always going to be sweet. I tell you this because I'm 23 years old, but I'm, I'm actually fighting for my salvation still. Every day I fight for my salvation. Every, every day. It's not easy. There was two men in the Bible that their face, it was, it, they light up when they see the glory of God and it was Stephen and Moses. So this is something really great that happened that day. It was just not something normal. Because to see a man, like I said, he was getting punished. And, and just saying, Lord, don't take this sin. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Amen. It's like a truly example of a real Christian. Amen. When they're getting punished and they still say, Lord, forgive them. Hallelujah. It's really hard nowadays to do that, Pastor. When someone, uh, someone hurt you, it's really hard to say, forgive them, Lord. Right. You just want to throw a rock back to him. <laughs> yeah. The same rock that he throw, you just want to pick it up and then throw just throw it at him. Throw it back. That's right. right. Did you say amen to that or not? Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened in church. I've seen it. Yeah. But Stephen gave us an example of a truly Christian. Amen. And that's really amazing. I want you to go to Acts. Seven fifty nine. Seven fifty nine. Amen. While while they were stoning him. And Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Right. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Amen. This is really, really sad. A truly Christian, a, a man of God, he was actually dying for something that was not even true. And many of us, we can say, oh, that's so sad. And everything ends right there. And we don't talk about Stephen no more. But this is something that happened that, that, that day. They actually changed and take the gospel to another level. All right. Because Saul, he was actually there that day. All right. So he saw these, all these happen. And I was studying. And, and when Stephen died, it was uh, the year 35 after Christ. And when Saul or Paul repented, it was a year 36 after Christ. So it was a year later. You know what this says to me? That Saul, it was impacted by Stephen's death. So it was not in vain. It was a sacrifice that was made at that time. Amen. And everyone can say, well, everything ends right there. Stephen just died. A great man of God. And that's how we remember him. And that's how we talk about him. But I want, I want to tell you tonight. There is something bigger than what you think. And this, what, this is what God has given me. There's people that, 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 that are supposed to. Their ministry is not that big in church. They only have faith. A good testimony. And that's it. But actually they're winning souls. They are taking this gospel to another level. So if you know up, you are not up here tonight. You are not up here tonight. Just keep on having a good testimony and a good faith. Right. 
Because you are winning people that are doing a job that you can probably not do, but still you are playing for the same team. You are playing for the same God. We are winning the same soul. Amen. This is an example that Stephen gave give, uh, give to us before he died. I think Saul, to see this, his heart has to be moved. Because it was something, it was supernatural, it was not something natural, it was something amazing that happened that day. The death of the Stephen actually, actually got something from Saul. And you know what, what happened that day? Something great and boring that day. Something really big happened that day because when Stephen died, all the disciples have to spread around. And they have to go preach around because they were persecuted by, by, by Saul at that time for that year. They were killing every man and woman, dragging out of their house. Yes. Right. And they were getting killed. Hallelujah. But a promise he was given, a commitment, a commitment he was given from God in Acts 1, 8. Yes. That they have to preach the word of God to the end of the earth. Right. And he was not happy to so the death of Stephen made the old disciples have to spread around. Yes. And Philip yes. went to, to, uh, to another, another place. And actually, the Spirit of God moved him to, to a, a, Ethiopia and preached to an Ethiopian. So that means that the gospel, he was actually getting to, to the continent of Africa in that moment. Yeah. So it was God's plan that all this happened so the word of God can be spread in all nations and all continents. <laughs> that day when Saul was touched by, the, by, death, uh, by, by, the, uh, by Stephen's death, Something really great happened because he has an, 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 uh, an encounter with, with God. Yes. 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 And something that really caught my attention when he fell from his ride, he said, Lord, who are you? Wow. And that means that in, in, the, in the Old Testament, the word Lord, it means Jehovah. Right. So he was recognizing and saying, God, who are you? Yeah. Right. And that amazed me because he has something inside of him to tell him the only thing that can be happening to me, this supernatural thing that's happening to me, this, this light that I'm seeing that blind me, it has to be God. And I know, I know that it's God because I saw the same lights in the Stephen face. I saw that day the same glory that day to happen. And this is happening to me is something greater. This is something, this has to be God. And he's saying, who are you? He reveals his name and he said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Hallelujah. And you know what he said? What do you want me to do? Yes. And this is amazing. Right there it means that he surrendered. He said, now it's not about me. Now that killer that I used to be, I'm not anymore. Amen. And he said, what do you want me to do? This is something really amazing when you say, God, what do you want me to do? There is a, a study that people say, if the God just comes right now and asks you, what do you want to know? And people say, well, I will ask them what is going to happen with my family. I will ask him what is going to happen with my money and my bank. What is going to happen to my children? What is going to happen to the end of the world? What is really going to happen? But no one say God, what do you want me to do? There's a lot of people out there that are not willing to do the will of God. And we have to understand tonight that we, all we have to do is just say, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? That means that everything he says you will do because he is your God. Amen. Amen. When all this happens, and Saul, he was blinded for three days. Uh, the, the Lord speaks to Ananias and told him to go about Tysol Saul and, and put hands on him because he was going to recover his vision, right? But you know what he said? He said, Lord, bro, how am I going to just go about Tysol? This man, he was killing all these Christians. Did you really want me to get killed? Are you, are you for real? Do you really just want me to go pray for these dude that is killing everyone? That's what I will say. Uh -uh. I'm not going there. And he said he has the authority to actually kill right here. Right. Right. 
He can kill me right now. If I go and pray for him, he can stab me anytime. I think when he was baptizing him, he didn't close his eyes. <laughs> and this guy that called him was actually blinded at that moment, so he couldn't see. Right? Amen. And he said, Saul, brother, in his ear. So that means like showing him a little love, you know, because he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know if he, yes, uh, Paul was turning around and just punching him in the face and kill him right there. <laughs> so he was a little nervous. He was a little nervous. But you know what God says and called my attention? I'm going to say it just in English. I just don't want to go to all the Bible verses. I'm going to take too much time. He said, oh, this is an, uh, Paul will be an instrument yeah. to take my name yeah. and to die for my name. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that means to me? Yeah. There was... Paul, he was right there in front of Stephen. He saw this and he was touched. It was absolutely God's plan. Yeah. And God's plans never fail. Amen. Paul, he was the man that God needed to take the gospel to another level. Yeah. To take the gospel to another, yeah. another level. And we are actually part of that revival that Paul actually preached. Yeah. Because he took the gospel to all these continents. And we are actually part of that revival and that preaching of Paul. And many of us say, thank you, Paul, for all, all that you've done for us. Thank you, Paul, for taking the gospel to another level. But we never say thank you, Stephen, for that impacting Paul's life. We never say thank you, Stephen, for actually let God use you and let us sacrifice you to actually touch this man's heart. Amen. We need to understand that our ministry, they need to be more grateful, appreciated in church. Because if you know what cleans the church, who is going to do it? Right, it's necessary that people that cleans the church have to be in church. Yeah, right. It's necessary who opens the door for the church has to be right there. Amen. You know why? Because the man of God needs to preach the word of God. He cannot be opening doors. Amen. So uh, there's people who have to sacrifice that. Ha sacrifice their time, their money, and all this yeah. for, for someone else to actually reach the loss. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I believe there is a there is a place for everyone in church. Amen. Amen. I know Stephen's ministry was actually big, but God knew that He needed a man like Paul to actually take the gospel to another level. Yeah. A man with many languages. He was actually he got money. He got political uh, wisdom, no political connections. So he was actually called to take the name to all the kings and, and important people at that time. There was no way that a man like a Stephen, a simple man like a Stephen, he was just a Christian, he was going to take the gospel to another level. He needed Paul. Yeah. And that's what he sacrificed, Stephen. Yeah. And many of us, we need to understand when, that sometimes we need to sacrifice ourselves back so someone bigger than us can grow and reach people that we cannot reach. Come on. Come on. So I want to tell you tonight, if you have sacrificed stuff in your life for this gospel and you think it, everything is in vain and everything is not worth it, that's not true. That's how the devil's life. Everything you're doing for this gospel, for this gospel is really important for God. And he's seen everything you are doing. He has seen and he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna give you everything back a hundred percent. And I do believe that when we do more, God is gonna give us more. The day that you stop giving, God is gonna stop giving you. He is giving you. Amen. If you have something, you have a thousand, two thousand dollars in your bank account, that doesn't belong to you at all. Amen. Because we don't receive nothing that doesn't come from God at all. Amen. So that's what we have to we, when, when we, we look at our bank account, we have to say, God, what do you want me to do with this? Come on. Because it doesn't believe it, it doesn't belong to us. Amen. Don't be afraid to invest in the kingdom of God. Amen. With my age, 23 years old, I give a vote to the church of $10,000. I haven't paid yet. I have paid like $3,000. $10,000 is a lot. Sounds a lot. Sounds like a lot. Right? 10, 10 grand. That's what it is. 10 k A lot of money. It's a sacrifice that I made. Because we need to win the loss. We need to take the gospel to another level. This is something that we cannot just play games right now. We have to invest everything, absolutely everything we have in the kingdom of God. Because you're not going to take absolutely nothing 
to heaven. Everything is going to stay here. Yeah. If you have three, four thousand dollars in your bank account, spend it today because you don't know if you got it coming tomorrow. <laughs> Say, Pastor, here, $1,000, man. You know, because you never know. Probably God is going to come tomorrow, and then you're going to say, Whoa, I left $10,000 down on earth. <laughs> you say that, you ain't going. <laughs> the devil's going to use it. All right, now. Right? <laughs> this, this, this is something that's just, that's just coming out of my mouth. And then I say, God wants me to say this. I'm saying it. I'm sorry. All right, all right. <laughs> This, this already. Paul just take the gospel to another level. He preached in places that, that everyone right now is enjoying of this gospel because of Paul. Christian Europe, Asia, around all these places, and everyone is enjoying the gospel now. We are actually part of that revival, I can say. And everyone says, thank you, Paul, but no one says, thank you, Stephen. Come on. It, it happens. It happens. Come on. All the ministers that we see that are big, that's the ones that we are actually grateful for. That we have this appreciation for. But how, what happened with the small ministers? Yeah. What happened with the people that, that you don't see, but they are actually downstairs cleaning the toilet? Yeah. You don't see it up here probably, but they're cooking for you. Yeah. Yeah. The people who are actually giving, and you don't see them giving. All right. 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 It's not necessary for the people to see you doing something for God. Just do it. Amen. Just do it because you are doing something greater than you think you're doing. And Stephen didn't know God's plan, but something great was going to happen. And he just said, God, do whatever you want with my life. If you want to kill me, kill me right now. That's what we are supposed to do. Just let our life be God's life. Amen. Wow. Amen. Just let God do whatever he wants with us. Because we don't know God's plan, but I'm going to tell you this, uh, this something tonight. God's plans never fails. Come on. Yeah, come on. Never fails. And you see that everything is going wrong right now. You see what is going on with my life. I'm twisted. I'm broken. Well, that is God's plans. It's still not even when stuff is going bad. It's still his plan. It's still his will. Because he's going to do something greater when everything happens. Right. Only you can show someone that you have a greater faith and a greater testimony. You're going to win that song. By you only holding into everything just pass. I have seen people in my dad's church. They have no food at all. Absolutely nothing. But they're still praising God. Amen. So other people see this kind of stuff and say, wow. This person really loves God. Amen. Even he's going for, uh, through a struggle. Through problem, he's still praising God. That's what we need to show other people so other people can grow in church. When, we, when you're going through problems, don't show it. Don't show your face. Don't cry. Just praise him. Just praise him because you are doing something even with your expressions and your face like Stephen did. Even with your emotions, you are impacting someone's life. When you're going through problems, just keep on dancing. Just keep on saying something in church. Don't stop your worship for some problems only. Come on. Come on. Come on. I believe to reach a, a person like Paul, it needs to be something supernatural to happen that day. Because he was a killer. He was a man with a, with a, a heart as a, like heart as a rock. So they need, they need someone like, they need a, a moment like that day, a death of someone, something really sad to actually move his heart. And I believe that Paul, he was touched. By a Stephen dead. I believe that in my Bible said it because actually Paul remembered Stephen when he was praying in the temple. And that made me think he was actually sad for Stephen dead. But he didn't know at that moment because he didn't know all these that God showed him in those three days of right. life. Because he said, no man teach me these. Everything that I have received is because God has shown me. Amen. Jesus Christ has shown me all this. So I believe that these men was touched by Stephen's death. And something greater happened in, in that moment. Amen. 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 We need to show the world out there. That no matter what our situation is. We do have a God and we trust him. Amen. No matter what if we're going to die and we are to the point of dying. 
It's the only way to actually change people's lives. It's the only way to show them that we do have a God and we trust Him. Amen. Maybe Stephen doesn't have many verses in the Bible. Maybe Stephen he was no more known when he died and they don't remember him anymore. But Paul has a whole New Testament of letters and stuff that say for Paul. And we repeat all his verses that he yeah. wrote yeah. and all these things that he's doing. And we say, we can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength and all this stuff. Amen. Right? right. Stephen didn't write nothing important really. Right. Probably he didn't do like something like Paul did. Probably he didn't, but he win his soul. He actually went Paul's life. So that's something crazy. This, this, is, this is telling me that the ministers, they are actually doing something as well. They're doing something greater than what they think they're doing. Yes. So don't feel bad. Don't feel because you're just playing play probably the bass, the, the piano. Don't feel bad. You're doing something for the kingdom and everything. Actually, everything counts. Yes. 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 It's necessary to be sacrifices. For revival to come. And when I say that, I'm talking about every kind of sacrifice. Money wise, time wise, and the leaders, they have to sacrifice even more. Even more. Because we are the ones we actually are more worried about this gospel. A lot of people don't understand what we have to give. We need to show the world. That we are truly Christian like Stephen T. Man. These generations need to have the spirit of a Stephen. It needs to because you guys need to, to win people that are actually going to take the gospel to another level. And it worries me. You know what? It worries me that everyone wants to be Paul, but no one wants to be a Stephen. All right. All right. And on. that worries me a lot. Come on. That everyone wants a microphone, but no one wants a brute a bru to sweep the floor. And that worries me a lot. I see this generation. Sometimes I do clean the church. Sometimes I do clean the toilet because I have to remember where I, where I came from. Yeah. I have to remember. I have to show other people that I'm not only the one who actually just get a mic. I have to show the people my youth that I can clean the church as well. That I can do all their stuff. This seems yeah. to be small, but I, they're small, but they're actually big in the kingdom of God. Yeah. How many of you want to be like a Stephen? Yeah. They are willing to do a small stuff that counts actually like they will be. Like I said, we all know the gospel by the effort that Paul made of taking the word of God and the minister to another level. Man. But no one say thank you, Stephen. Amen? Amen. 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 The Bible says that by the minister of, of Paul, millions were saved. Yes, millions were saved. But you know why? Because someone like Stephen yeah. let God use his life and sacrifice to do something like this. And it's crazy. To me, it seems to be crazy that God was killing a minister, a minister and a ministry in that moment because he knew that something bigger and greater was going to come along with it. Amen. That, that, is, that is something really crazy to me. I said, well, Stephen, he was doing a lot of stuff. But he was not doing enough. He was not the man that God needed to do. The to, 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 he was, God he was going to use. Yeah. So we need to understand that every money that we invest, every sacrifice that we make, yeah. is not in vain. Yeah. When your pastor goes flying to another country, that all that counts. You are reaching the same soul that he's reaching. Right. You, are do, you are doing the same work that he's reaching. Maybe you are not preaching in the places that he's preaching. But you are sacrificing yourself so souls can be coming. They can come to Jesus. Amen. I have to tell you this. You need to sacrifice yourself for someone to actually win souls that you can know when. Many of us cannot get out of the country because of our situation, our, our um, you know, paper-wise, whatever. Amen. Right, right. I'm an immigrant as well. Yeah. I couldn't go out of the country until I actually got a green card, and I haven't got out of the country. <laughs> and I cannot go to Africa right now and reach people. There's people that can go to Africa and reach them. That's why we have all that and give money to all these people that actually can. Yeah. Right, right. 
So they were saying, why are we giving to all these people? Why is all this about all this mission and stuff? Why do we keep on giving? Because you cannot go there and preach them. But there is someone who actually gets you. You are sacrificing yourself. So you can take it off to another level. That is something that we have to understand. Everything we do for God, He sits and, and he, he will pay you back. Yes. I want you to go to Act 2117. I'm sorry I couldn't. Like, I told Pastor, Pastor, you put me to a test. And, and I thank you. It's a sacrifice. Amen. This is not my first language. I only got five years in this country. And I'm actually trying my best. But I will, I will get better. And I will come back. And I will have the English like a breathing guy like with an accent and everything, you know? <laughs> And you're going to be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Can you read this verse for me? Acts 21, 17. Keep going. 18. Read it to the 20, 20 verse. 19. In the 20, finish with that one. Something that amazed me. They received Paul with so much joy. Yeah. And they were like, Thank you, Paul, for everything you have done. Look, you have saved so many people because of your ministry. But no one say, Look, you know what? You remember the guy who actually touched your life? Right. Did you remember that person that actually prayed for you that, and you actually got baptized yeah, right. with the Holy Ghost? That you were moved? Do you guys remember who wins your soul? All right. Who actually preached to you? Yes. Come on. Huh? Yes. And many of them, they're not even in church. There's people who have preached to many of us, and they're not even in church. Yep. Probably they died already. They're gone. We have to remember who actually preached the gospel, the gospel to us for the first time. If this pastor right here preached the gospel to you for the first time, you need to say thank you, Bishop, Jerry. Because... That's the man that sacrificed his whole life for you to actually go to heaven. His family, his time, his money. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Many of us don't, don't remember that. We just go on. We just go on in life. But we don't take the time to say, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, man. Thank you, Brother Garson. Thank you, Pastor Garson. For everything you have done. For all the sacrifices you have made. Amen. I know there is some stuff that you do that people doesn't see. You know? all right. Probably they don't even say thank you for it. All right. right? Amen. There is a stuff behind the door that we don't see. Right. What's actually happening. Right. Happening. And that's the stuff that counts in the kingdom. Amen. My Bible says that everything you do in secret, God will reward you in public. You don't have to do everything to show up. You don't have to do everything just for people to see. Come on. You don't have to do everything for people to actually say thank you every, every time you do something. Come just on. do it. Come if you just see something in the ground, pick it up. If you just see it in the bathroom, and there, you just clean it. Don't wait for someone to come and clean it. Just do it. That's the sacrifice that God wants you Amen. to do. That's the sacrifice that, one, that God wants you to actually make. Amen. When we are humble enough to do a stuff that other people doesn't want to do and that is okay because maybe that person has something else going on maybe that person is actually preaching where the places you are cannot preach maybe that person has the, uh, the, 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 the language that you cannot speak because I cannot preach an Indian I cannot preach an uh, African so we are sacrificing all this because other people are taking this gospel to another level. And I'm amazed how many people is here of different cultures. I'm happy for this. This is crazy. It looks just like heaven. It looks just like heaven. Because this is how we're going to be in heaven. All colors, all 
ways? Amen. Right? Amen. That's right. And I, something that I saw, Pastor, and I want to I wanna say this before I go, is that this church is more than a church. It's a family. Yes. I, I can see it. Amen. You guys talk. You guys hug. And that's what's supposed to happen in a church. Amen. And that's how you guys grow. Amen. That's how a church goes to another level when people love each other. That's the key of everything. Amen. And if you keep doing this, if you keep doing this, many souls are going to come and people are going to know this church Amen. as a living hope. Yeah. Yes. And that's where it's important. Sacrifice everything you got for, 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 for you, for someone to take this gospel to another level. Amen. I want Bishop to come here. And, and actually, before I finish, I want him to pray for me because I feel something tonight that I never felt before. Hallelujah. I never preached in English before. And I know this is not the last time, actually. Amen. Amen. And I, I want to share this with these men right here because it's something great that happened in my life. And actually, these three days changed me. Praise God. I came here because Bishop went to our church. And he invited me out of nowhere because he was not supposed to be there that day. He was not supposed to be there. We don't have service on Thursday. We went. He actually gave a great testimony that actually touched me. God. He invited wow. me here. Wow. I actually didn't have no money to come here, actually. I don't have a car that is drivable to come 15 hours away. Oh my God. But my car actually made it. And the last minute, I did find the money to come. And I'm here. And I, I know in English I didn't make the same, you know, the same impact probably that I did in Spanish in the other church, but I know that God did what he was oh supposed yeah. to do. Yeah. you all to join with us. We're going to pray for this couple. I, I believe, I believe I, he sacrificed tonight because I told him I wanted to preach in English because I wanted our church to connect with them. I don't know what the future holds, but God does. And I want you to stretch out your hand and we're going to pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to rest upon this couple. Angels, to watch over them and protect them. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm so thankful that you brought Brother Jonathan, Lord, his wife, and him here to this service, to our city, to each of our services, and you used him to bring us the word. I pray for your anointing to rest upon them, your blessings. Give them, Lord, a great harvest of souls. Lord, I pray for the spirit of a soul winner to rest upon this couple. In Jesus' name. 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 I want to do one more thing. You can be seated. Brother Jim.